What's Salvation Army's role in this campaign? The Salvation Army's role is joining in to try and raise awareness wherever we're invited to. So um, a couple of Sundays back I was speaking in a mosque mm -hmm. uh, to the Nigerian um, congregation in that mosque. Um, it, it can be in a community group. Um, so we are involved in trying to say this community can make a difference. Mm -hmm. This community, if you spot the signs, you can make a difference. This is what to look out for. Mm -hmm. Don't keep quiet, do something about it. So that's part of our role in this campaign. This particular campaign focuses on the Nigerian community. How have you taken into consideration the cultural norms of having house help? Um, I mean, it's not uncommon, uncommon to have yeah. someone in the house that might raise their voice to someone that's working there. How have you gone about, like, what are the key things that people should look out for if they suspect that someone is a domestic slave? Well, you're looking for someone who is treated differently to the rest of the family. So if there are, um, if there are other children and they're dressed smartly, and they, they can move independently, they go to school on their own, they have friends coming in, and they are sociable, outward going. If, if there is one person in that house who is completely different, who maybe is dressed more shabbily, maybe does not look so well fed, who looks afraid or anxious, tired, um, is never seen out on their own, doesn't associate with other people. You're looking for differences. Mm -hmm. So, obviously, in the Nigerian community, all the children will be expected to do chores. Mm -hmm. That's part of it. In most cultures, the children are expected to do chores. But there's a line that you don't cross. And we're looking at somebody who is held um, and abused and misused, not respected. Mm -hmm. They don't have any rights. They're not paid any money. Or if they are, it's very little. So we're looking for signs that someone is basically not being treated like a member of the family mm -hmm. and is being abused. You're calling for more people to come forward, both of you for Africa and the Salvation Army. What happens when someone has an inkling that maybe someone is being abused? What happens next? What's the steps that someone can take to then get that person some sort of help? The good thing is that um, there are people and charities who are raising their voice. Mm -hmm. um, you've talked about Unseen. Unseen is involved in a 24-7 um, helpline, mm -hmm. which is confidential. So if a member of the public believes that something's going on they're not happy with, um, and they don't want to confront that family, they can call that helpline. Um, the number you can you can find 0800-0121-700. So if you want to stay anonymous, but you are concerned about something, you want advice, you want someone to look into that situation, then that's the number to call. If this person is identified as a victim of modern slavery, of domestic servitude, you can also call the Salvation Army's um, referral line. It's a 24-7 referral line. And again, in that situation, it's the Salvation Army who could conduct the interview, the National Referral Mechanism interview, which will enable that individual to receive the help they need. What happens is um, they would have a caseworker who would come alongside them to tailor support to whatever their needs are. They would receive a minimum of 45 days reflection and recovery mm -hmm. period. It's often much longer than that, and the whole purpose is to help that person to move on in whatever way that is. If they want to seek asylum, then the caseworker will help them to make their asylum application. If they want to return home to their home country, then again the caseworker will work to ensure that there is a safe return to their home country but there is support even if that person does not have papers and is therefore deemed illegal, they would be protected because they are a victim of modern slavery. So I think that that's a key issue that you've just said. If someone is an illegal immigrant or they don't have the right visa papers, that might, they might 
be more reluctant to come forward. So what reassurance can that person have from the Salvation Army to know that if I do contact you, that I won't then just be put into a holding detention centre, that the proper channels will be put in place for me to get the help that I need. Well, even if, I mean, we've, we've had cases where somebody has actually, well, it was a young girl who was actually used as a, a domestic um, servant. She was given up by her parents age 10 and started working as a domestic servant. And then the family she was working for came to the UK, brought her as their domestic servant. And she stayed with them until she was about 15, working as a domestic slave, basically. Mm -hmm. um, and the master of the house started to make um, advances and she ran away. And she went to, her, to a church and the church took her in and she went to school she uh, finished her education, she wanted to go to university. She didn't have any papers, so it was at that point when she tried to get into university mm -hmm. that she was identified as an illegal immigrant and went to detention centre. When she got to the detention centre and told her story, that's when she was identified mm -hmm. as a victim of modern slavery, mm -hmm. and so she was able to leave the detention centre and come into a safe house. Mm -hmm. And in the safe house is where she had the support to try to put her papers in order to try to um, get leave to remain within this country through the asylum, the proper asylum process. So um, I'm not saying that we guarantee the outcome. What I'm trying to say that is that everybody who is identified as a, a victim of modern slavery will receive the opportunity to apply through the asylum channels mm -hmm. um, for a right to remain. Yeah. So I suppose working with adults, it might in a way be slightly easier. They might see the programme, they might see things online um, to be able to learn more about what modern slavery is. Um, how have you find working for a children's charity being able to reach out to people? I know you've both mentioned the church, but is there any other channels that you would be able to use, such as schools, to get the message out? Oh yes, um, at the moment there's something online, um, Afroka, the advertising for people, just random community people to come forward, children, especially uh, um, girls, bring them into Afroka um, head office in Islington, in London, to come and train them that you're in school, you're, you're, you're among your peers, there's somebody that doesn't speak, doesn't like to talk. So they, they have that ongoing at the moment. I think it's coming up sometime in two weeks' time. Yeah. But also, um, there have been visits into school to raise awareness in school communities so that um, the, the pupils there can be looking out for children because they can be going to school. Uh, but not permitted to engage with the other children. What's the most common way for a child to be, to be put into um, domestic slavery? Is it through a family or is it through trafficking into the country? I think it's easier with um, adults to traffic them. Mm -hmm. But with children, it's with family. They physically go to Nigeria to say, I know you're in poverty, we can help raise your child in a more better environment, which is UK. So we'll be sending money to you every month to look after the rest of the children, where they try, uh, they'll, they'll bring that child here and they start abusing her. They call it foster care. For, yeah, for, that's it, foster care. They yeah. call it foster care. But in, in, in this context, the legal foster care, so if you can, you can foster them, but you have to go through the right channels. Yes, mm -hmm. but this is not the right channel. <laughs> how, how easy is it for someone to foster someone from, say, Nigeria? Is that something that's easy for people to do? But I wouldn't say it's easy, especially we Africans, especially Nigerians, we like to get these things done quickly. We just want to get in there, get the child, bring the child here because we're so busy working, we can't do things the proper way. So the legal foster care and the, the, the right channel to foster somebody, it is quite a, a long process. 
which I don't think Nigerians are ready to go through that. Okay. Yeah. So Diane, you've mentioned that once someone is referred to you, they, there might be 45 days or longer of that referral period. What happens to a child once they're referred to you? Is there the same sort of procedure? Yeah, Afroka basically focus on children. Mm -hmm. They don't do with adults. Mm -hmm. So when people refer children to them, they go through the same process Diane has explained already. Mm -hmm. They have uh, counsellors, they have um, um, advocates, advocate, people that take them through, the, the speak to them mm -hmm. to say, well, you've been through this, this is what and what we can do to help you out of that situation. Are they giving a social worker? Yes, yes. so they would, be, they would be put with a, foster fa a true foster family and they would have a social worker um, and their situation would be treated they are a vulnerable child, so um, their, their situation will be treated through the social services. I would like both of you, if possible, to give some advice to someone who might be listening to us now. What would you say to them? I would say, if you are holding someone in a situation of domestic servitude, it's time to look at that person as a an individual who deserves respect, they need to be paid for their work, they need a sensible working time. If you can uh, look after them and care for them and you can pay them the legal rate, then you will not be in trouble. But if you continue to abuse this individual, then you will be in trouble. And for someone who finds themselves in that situation where they feel powerless because they have been told they can't trust anyone, that they have no legal papers, so they are illegal, they have no, um, they have no reason to leave the house, even if they have had uh, juju used over them, they can still find help. They can call the 24-7 referral line, which is 0300 303 8151 and there will be someone on the other end of the phone who will listen to them. They will be listened to and they will be helped to escape that situation and to find the support that they need to move on. I think my own advice would be to the people that, that visit these so-called trafficker at home and they see things like this happening and they decide to keep quiet. They don't want to come out to speak. So my advice is if you notice anything, any sort of domestic slavery in a house with your friends, with your dad, with your mom, please come out and report it. You, you don't have to give your name, but just please save somebody's future.